everybody, it's Amy. These are recorded instructions for period two ceramics for May 18th through the 22nd. So uh, first of all, make sure you read through our OneNote calendar so you know the expectations for the week. Please make sure that you go to the Microsoft Forms. I'm gonna click on that link, so take a look at it here. Fill this out, please. It's asking for your name, if you watch this video. If you attend the live session, and I'm planning to have a live session this week with you, uh, please let me know if the instructions are clear or not. Uh, tell me what you're working on. This is really important because I am trying to keep track of who's doing what so I can go in and grade things. I have a lot of students who haven't done anything, anything since March 13th. Quite a few of you have turned in nothing. And so you need to turn your work in. Um, I go back and I check and it's not there. And then a couple of days later, I look again. It's a lot of my time wasted looking for work that's not there. Please sync your OneNotes. That's super important. That could be the reason why your work isn't showing up. I'm syncing my OneNote every day, so you should do the same. Then tell me what you need help with. If it's something you really can't wait for, please send me an email. because I'm checking these three times a week. And then let me know who's giving you feedback. That's really important for me to know. If you're struggling and you answer none, I need to connect you with some people or myself uh, weekly so we make sure you have a concept of what's going on. And you're not lost. I don't want you to feel lost in all this. It's really important that you do the forms because if you don't fill it out, you will be counted absent for the week. So uh, by the end of the day on Tuesday, um, please have that filled out, preferably Monday, but Tuesday is probably good for our class. Okay, so watch these instructions, of course. There'll be a couple of locations in the OneNote where you can access those and then attend the live meeting. So this week's plan. First, you're working on your personal expression project, okay? I've adjusted some of the dates in here because I think we need a little bit more time for this project. Um, I've made it week three and four. You'll be revising and completing this project this week. Um, try to get as much done as you can. Um, read the feedback in your OneNote that I've given you. If I've gone there last Friday and there was nothing there, I put like no evidence, there's nothing, or get busy, work on your stuff. I haven't graded all of them yet. I'm just waiting for you to turn in your work and keep working on anything that you're doing. Uh, turn in your revised work to that same page where you put your rough drafts. If you didn't do the rough draft, just turn in your final, okay? It's fine, just get it done. And then you can start working on your artist statement. Just start gathering ideas for that. Um, this week, we're also working on the reflection. So that means you need to finish your project and then do the reflection. It's an artist statement about your work. And you'll be adding your artist statement to this page. If by chance you go in your OneNote, sync it first. But if you don't see these tabs in your OneNote, please copy them and paste them from the content library. Some people I've gone through and they've deleted their pages. I'm not sure what's happening. Just not, a, not just a few people. So just right click, copy it, go to your personal OneNote and paste it in. This is everything you need, okay? I did distribute those to your OneNotes. So they should be there. If you have a major problem or yours looks different than what's in the content library here in the personal expression project tab, please just send me an email. I'll go into your OneNote and I'll fix it up for you. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes you, know, you just move things around and you're like, ah, oh, what do we do? Anyway, um, let's go back to the calendar. Uh, so that's what we're doing on the personal expression project this week. Just wrap it up, get as much done as you can. And then your um, artist statement's not due till the 29th. So that's next week. So you have lots of time for that. But I put that in there for you to get started on it, okay? Uh, the second thing is complete any prior projects. If you did not do the video I assigned in the Microsoft Forms, it's going in the grade book. You need to watch that 30 minute video about that amazing ceramic artist and fill out the forms. There's about eight people who did it. Remember, you can do that with a partner if you want. So get that done. And if you're still working on the found object sculpture, you need to wrap that up. You need to get it finished and turn it in as, as soon as you can. If you need more time on that or you're having trouble, email me or book a time, okay? And the last thing is we have a final project for this class. I wish it were ceramics, but I'm super sorry. We're not going back into the school building right now. and Anything that you've created in our classes so far, I will definitely be firing at some point, but I'm not sure when, okay? So the final project can't be ceramics unless you have, you know, clay at home and you're wanting to work on that. I'm gonna click on this link. 
uh, because it takes you to a new tab that I created called Final Project. Um, this is an outline of our final project to get you started um, on your path for the assignment, okay? I'm going to talk about this in just a moment. I'm going to come right back to it. Um, instead of making a second video like I did for my other class, I'm going to include it in this video, which makes this video a little bit longer, but I hope it makes sense. But I want to go back to the calendar, so I make sure that um, I don't forget to let you know that you can always book a time with me if you have questions. And this is what it looks like, all right? I've had this for, ooh, four months now, it feels like. You go and you pick out a day, and then you pick out a time, and then you fill out the information below, and then you click book. Now, if you book a time, I have my calendar completely wide open because sometimes I'm done with a class early and everybody's just working on things and I can meet with people. But if you book a time with me, it goes right to my calendar and it automatically accepts it. That way, if you need my attention or you need some time that day, you've got 15 minutes. But if it doesn't work for me or I don't show up, um, it's probably because you booked it really like last minute and I didn't see it or the time doesn't work for me, I'll reschedule, okay? Um, I've had a few students miss their times. It's not a big deal. We reschedule. So don't feel like, oh, I don't know. I should book a time with Amy. She might be really tired. Don't worry about it. I will tell you. If I am too tired to do a session with you, you will know. <laughs> if not, it'll be fine. And I'll try to um, make arrangements so that I can get those uh, bookings as soon as possible with you so I can help you and support you with whatever you need. So don't be afraid to ask me for help. And if I have someone else who may step in to help you with it, I might. You know, I have a wonderful student teacher from Newport High School, Alexander. Remember him? He was in our class for a while. He is this close to finishing his AP portfolio and is super excited about the possibility of supporting some of you with ideas and working through your projects. Um, he is a really great help. He's been helping out my high school ceramics class and is amazing with ideas and thoughts, and it's really been helpful. So if you would like some support from me and Alexander, we can even a work in a team or a group to help you out, okay? Um, so basically that's the whole week and what we're working on. I do wanna talk a little bit about the final project. So I'm gonna click that link and I'm gonna go over this. It'll take a few minutes, okay? But it'll be worth it because you have this really cool final project. that's a little bit different than anything we've done so far. So project overview. Your final project will be a visual project and could be part of another class project. Have something coming up in science and you know you're doing this plant project and you would like to incorporate something that we're doing um, in our class to that one that would be a visual project, you could do this. Um, if you have a social studies project where you have to build a website or you have to you know, create this PowerPoint and videos, that would be something that you could work on for this. Or if you have to make a poster, well, it's probably better for you to do a digital poster at this point and I can help you with that and you can use it as this project. So. Um, there's a, I have here, watch this final project overview and lecture by Amy. I'm just going to put the link to this video right in here. My high school class, I made a separate video because theirs is a little bit different than yours. Um, but your project must meet the following requirements. One, your project must include visual design aspects that enhance and add visual elements. It enhances and adds visual elements to other, another class project. I've got some spelling things here, sorry. <laughs> to another class project or choice project. I'm gonna repeat that. This, your project must include visual design aspects that enhances and adds visual elements to another class project or choice project. I think I need to work on my grammar. I think I am a little tired. Anyway, uh, number two, it must be created by you, but can include assistance from family or peers. Number three, it must contain challenging elements that include new learning you have acquired or technique skills you specifically worked on for the project. That's a really important part because you're going to write about that in your artist statement. I want you to learn something or work on a skill that you've wanted to work on for a while. Number four, it must contain visual ideas that are not all copied or duplicated from someone else's ideas, but it must include a visual reference in your project it is an inspiration or appropriated work from another artist or person, not a peer. So that's the part people are like, what? You mean, I'm not copying, but I'm using someone else's idea? Yes, a little tiny bit. It's called appropriation of images, okay? So in order to understand that, you must watch this video here 
because it explains the art of copying something. But copying isn't the real word for it. The real word is appropriation. And appropriation is when you take someone else's idea or concept or design and you switch it around and you use it for your purposes to create something new and different and novel that is interesting and unique, but not copying someone's idea. It happens all the time. And in this video here, um, it's from PBS Digital Studios. They have these cool projects called Art Assignment. And they actually have the whole assignment there for you. And they interview artists and they show you really cool works. And some of them are really controversial and interesting. I think that's a 10 minute video. You have to watch it to understand this project. You're not doing their assignment. But once you watch the video, you'll understand what I'm talking about by using someone else's idea and image in your work. Okay, so I'm going back to number five here. You must watch this video and include one reference in your artist statement and planning that shows how you used another person's idea, thought, concept, and you must explain how you appropriated it somehow into your work. So, for example, if you um, take a pop art, for example. Pop art, I have some example here. Gotta get it, here we go. So um, this on the edge here is a little tiny piece of pop art. Um, little aspect from the School of Life, I have these cards of confidence. Um, and so one thing that is interesting about um, pop art is it's used a lot for getting people's attention. So Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein were two famous pop artists, mostly British and American artists um, did pop art in you know, between the 50s and the 70s, and sometime in the 80s, it was pretty popular too. I'll put some links in the OneNote to that. But anyway, it uses shapes and color and words and text to get your attention. So if I were to, I'm gonna open this up a little bit and show you some of the little pieces on the back. These are little tiny pieces from the back of the cards. And this box holds a bunch of cards and uh, there are like quotes on one side and there are pictures on the other. But all of these cards, if you were to lay them all out on the back side and arrange them, they're a puzzle and they make one big, huge artwork. OK, um, that's not what pop art's about, but they use the style of pop art. Um, and the word confidence has a lot to do with pop art because uh, pop art's very bold and, and very um, like there and right in front of you. So basically, um, this box of cards, believe it or not, I'm gonna see if I can shut the box here. This box of cards contains appropriated images. The idea of it is probably appropriated from someone else too. Oh, I'm gonna put a bunch of cards in a box and then you can pull them out and use them as prompts in a circle or something. I've done that before at school where we pulled out a card and you know, read it and we go around the circle and we talk about it. So that's why I have these because I've used them before. Um, but this idea could have been taken from someone else or appropriated. But the artwork itself, the concept of the style using it to get people's attention and being it the theme of confidence, the pop art is appropriated from the whole genre of pop art or style of pop art and put into something else that's completely new and different. So if you were to use pop art for yours, that you could make a poster or you could incorporate pop art into your um, website or whatever you wanna do. Or if you're making a poster for science and you used pop art as your, you know, the style you're making it in, that would be appropriation of that style. But then you have the idea, let's say, you want to appropriate this idea of, oh, these are cool cards for like a circle for a class or something. But instead of copying this and saying, oh, I'm gonna make another one just like this, that's copying. But if you were to say, well, I think I like the idea. What if I put them in a different kind of container? Maybe it's, it's a plastic, clear plastic, and I painted the outside of it. And maybe instead of cards, what if I had recipes? What if one had a recipe on each side and the other side had a photo of what it looked like at the end? Now, that would be a completely different idea, a same kind of concept of using a card that's in a container, but the box would be different, the style you might use would be completely different, and what's on the cards is different. So that's appropriation of the idea, using it to make something completely unique and original. 
So I want you to, that's just an, one example, okay? So another one here, I've got one right here, I have stamps. Okay, so you could design your own stamps. Yeah, they're stamps, you didn't think of it. And if you did, sorry, you didn't. <laughs> so let's say you're gonna design a, a set of stamps. Do you know that you can actually go to stamps.com? This is not a commercial, but you can actually go there and you can actually have your stamps made into real stamps, order them, they print them, and then you put them on your envelopes. I did not know that till last week when I went to buy stamps because I have two left. That's it. I've been sending a lot of cards lately. So you could even design a little brochure like this. This is like, you know, this little, it's not really a brochure, but it's like forever stamps. And I don't know. It doesn't look very good. I think if I were going to make stamps, I'd make, I want to make the bro brochure look really pretty and interesting. And maybe it has a clasp around it and you opened it and you, I don't know. Maybe I want to make this. So you could redesign stamps. Um, think about those kind of things. I have one more thing here. A wonderful student gave this to me a while ago. And it's really, really special. And so it's a polished stone and it has the word courage on it. And it has, I always keep it right here at my desk. So maybe you could use this idea and, and you could go out and some, collect some rocks and scrub them off and clean them. Don't take rocks from your parents' garden though that they need. because That is not cool. But <laughs> you could find some that are not, you know, special rocks and you could paint them and you could place them in your garden and that could be your project you could get some wood from the woods or something and you could carve something up or you could paint it so start thinking about something that you might be able to make for this project i'm going to go back to the one note again and um just go to the next part is basically plan your project i have not pushed out all these documents to you yet it's going to be super simple they'll just be like a page in here that says planning turn in project turn in and then like grading yourself. It'll be simple. It's not going to be over the top or anything, but get some feedback on your planning from other people and then start working on your project. You do need to plan it. I need to see something and start researching, you know, what's your appropriated image? Is it photography? Is it um, drawing, painting? I have no idea what yours will be. It might be sculpture. It might be ceramics. Maybe you, you did lots of research. Well, you did actually, all of you did amazing research um, and it's actually located here. Let me go to that real quick. Our slab research, amazing clay work, and pinch research. Um, there's some great stuff here. So if you want to go back in and find some things that you did before and use those for ideas of appropriated images, you could totally do that. So um, after you start working on your project here, get comfortable. Okay. After you start working on your project, um, get some feedback from other people, revise and refine, and then turn it in. Okay. Those turning pages, like I said, will be turned will be created soon by me. I just haven't had the chance yet. And then you're gonna be you're gonna create um, an artist statement um, and add your final project to your OneNote. Okay. So the artist statement will be very similar as that as your last one. You'll just be writing something up or whatever you want to do. So there's three driving questions. Um, how does image or idea appropriation lead to great ideas or personal growth? Two. How can artists and designers use others' I others' ideas in novel ways to create new works of art and design? And how can art and design skills, techniques, and methods enhance personal learning through interests? That's what Big Picture is all about, is learning through interests. So this is your chance. Okay, last part, project examples. There is a huge list I made, and it doesn't include everything, because if I did that, I would be here forever, and I'm not doing that. So you have to come up with what you want to make. A website, drawing and painting, sculpture, ceramics, installation art, uh, design concept, digital art, mosaic. Somebody in my other class, uh, we were talking about final project last week, and they're like, "Oh, I'm going to do a mosaic. I have this, you know, a bunch of mugs that broke, and I, they're just in, you know, in the in the garage. I'm going to break them with a hammer, and I'm going to put them in cement." And I'm like, "That's such a cool idea." And they're going to put them in their garden, like stepping stones. I like that. Be careful. You know, get yourself hurt with glass or. Um, ceramic pieces that are broken. Um, and by the way, if you're ever going to do that, I always cover it with a cloth and then use a hammer on that so you don't get stuff and wear goggles. Okay. Um, fabric design. Somebody's going to sew a pillow, blanket. What do they say? Um, somebody else want to do some knitting? Sure. Whatever you want. Um, culinary arts project. I know y'all love food. So do I. I've been really hungry today. Uh, design a meal for others. Locate recipes, prepare and cook the food, present and photograph the food, enjoy the food and clean up after yourself. What a cool project. You could totally do that. Just document it, okay? Make a menu. Oh, I should add that in. Uh, make a menu. Okay. 
All right, next one, a series of graphic design posts. Uh, I'm not saying you should post on Instagram. I'm just saying you could make them. You could make them in Adobe Spark and then you could turn them in. I'm not gonna make you post them officially, but you could make some. I can't actually ask you as middle schoolers to post anything online. Oh, you can make some posters. Oh, you can make some political posters. Um, you can make videos if you'd like. Uh, please don't make a 15 minute video though. That's huge. I would pick something five minutes. You wanna do something longer, it's up to you. Um, let's see, music, dance, podcasts, so many things. So be creative, make something meaningful and share your ideas with others. Uh, for grading, I'll be grading your planning, composition, organization, revising and completing your work and your meaning and personal connection. Just like the last project, it will look the same with rubrics. I'll probably copy those and just paste them in to the turn in pages. Okay, so that was a little bit long, but that explains the final project. Do you have to do the final project this week? No, you're just thinking about it. You're considering while you're finishing up the personal expression project, okay? If you wanna start working on it, be my guest. Okay, so that was long, but I hope it was informative. I will see you in the live session in class and tutorial this week. Bye everybody, thank you.